In this presentation, we're going to be looking at a few tips and tricks that I put together for the AU class with regards to dynamics. And they're pretty basic, but they're they're very powerful. Um, if you haven't done a lot with Maya's dynamics, I think these tips and tricks will help you out a lot. So the first thing that you want to make sure is that your playback speed is set to either playback free or playback free max real time. The other thing that I like to uh, like to do with this is I also, also like to use the interactive playback a good bit, and we'll be talking about that in this presentation. In Maya, there's two different types of particles. There's the classic particles, and there's the Maya N particles. I recommend always using Maya N particles. They do everything the classic particles did, plus they have lots of nice control that you can use to automate things to ramp widgets, and they have the ability to be tied into other N systems like N cloth and N hair. So the end particles basically are, are my go-to choice for particles. So what we want to do is we want to get a couple particles in our scene to begin working with, and we're going to use the end particle tool to do that. So the end particle tool allows me to set two points in a grid just by simply clicking two points, and it goes ahead and it builds a mesh. And if we look at the attributes for this end particle system, you'll basically see that in the dynamics attributes, they're going to be using some of the end particle or some of the nucleus framework here. So it's going to basically automatically drop to the ground because of that. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just use a preset to dial in a little bit of intelligence or dial in a little bit of look and feel to these particles. So presets are really powerful inside of Maya. I use them all the time. All they're really doing is taking all the attributes on a in the attribute editor and saving them out to a text file. So we're going to just use this DTO preset to dial in those particles. And they're a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on multipoint. So what I've got here is I've got a ramp widget drive, dri driving their speed, so as they accelerate or they move a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and turn gravity on for these guys. As they start to move, you can see that they kind of wipe through that that ramp widget, and as they slow down, they basically go to to the bottom of this this color ramp widget. So it's pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a turbulence field to these at to these to these particles, and we're going to be looking at the conserve and how the conserve can be used, so that we can really get a sense of what that turbulence field is doing. So I turn the gravity off now, just for a, for a second, and we're going to go into our dynamic relationships window. And we're going to turn the turbulence on. So as we play this back, what happens is those particles basically get just blown away. We don't see any effect of the little eddies and vortexes and swirls that that turbulence field has. So if you really want to see what that turbulence field looks like and the effect of it on these, on these particles and not have them just go flying off into space, all we have to do is drop down that conserve value. As soon as I do that, you can really start to see these particles getting caught up in those little eddies and those little vortexes, even pretty low value, you know, in, in the nines, you'll still get a sense of what those particles are, are doing as they get caught up inside of that particles, that turbulence field. So it's a really powerful feature inside of Maya. Let's go ahead and turn gravity back on. Those guys will sort of drop down, but we get this sort of nice layered effect with that turbulence field. With that lower conserve value, you really get a sense of what they're doing. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add on the effect of the Newton field. So if we look at this Newton field and we begin playing around with this, I'm going to use interactive playback. And the reason I'm going to use interactive playback, well I'll show you. Let's first let's first play it back without interactive playback. So as this plays back, I have my Newton field selected. I'm in my translate tool and I start to move this around. Notice that as I translate that, the playback stops. And this Newton field isn't having any effect on this. The reason the Newton field has no effect on it is because the attenuation is very low. If you remember in the first demo for the AU class, I basically talked about that direct manipulation tool, or hitting the T tool, to get to this little um, modifier that allows me to adjust attributes in the UI. So this is a good example of using that T tool to get to that attenuation on that Newton field. So let's go back to our translate tool. And this time, we're going to use interactive playback. So with interactive playback on, you can see as I move this guy around, basically those particles never stop playing back. Now here's something that's pretty interesting. If I wanted to modify an attribute on this guy, notice the attribute editor only has a Newton field turned on. If I go ahead and I select the particle system, and I hit Control A twice, it toggles that, that, that attribute editor. It's just a, it's a good trick 
Basically, if I want to get that Newton field back again, hitting Control A twice while the interactive playback is playing back allows you to pop this node. Another way to pop this node is to use the focus. So while interactive playback is playing back, if I use focus, it allows me to change what the attribute editor is showing. So if you select a node in the outliner and you want to get it to show up in the attribute editor while interactive playback is still going, you can just use a Control A, or you can look and see if it happens to show up in the focus tab. Now we talked about using Mel to make shelf buttons. Often I'll use Mel to go ahead and make a little shelf button to load up um, you know, if, I, if I'm going to be using a scene over and over again, I like to make shelf buttons that automatically load the attributes for the nodes that I want to work with, things like the, um, the Newton field or the particle shape. So all I do to do this is I'll clear the history, I'll turn on the record, and I'll go and I'll say pop focus and say Newton field. I'll turn off the record history, and if we go to the top of this, you can see here's the, uh, the mel command, the second command down, that I can use to basically give me a shelf button that'll make the Newton field. I can clear the history one more time, turn on echo all commands, pop my focus to my particle shape, turn off that echo all command, scroll up here, grab that second line down. So now I've got mel buttons that basically will load my Newton field and load my particle shape. So just a simple example again of how we can circle back and use what the echo all commands does to build little shelf buttons that I'm going to be using these same, the same scene over and over again. Not having to dig through stuff to get to these, these, uh, these nodes is really helpful having shelf buttons that load them up for me. So those are just a few examples of the types of things that we can do, you know, a couple of little automated things that we can do. Interactive playback, again, very, very powerful inside of Maya. Having these shelf buttons that will let me adjust the overall effect of what these Newton fields are doing, or maybe adjust what this particle system's doing, all based on using um, what we learned. Hopefully you guys find some value in this. Let me know.